Shalom and welcome to Two Mitzvah Torah. This year is entitled Acquiring a Table, Any Object Left Outside Someone's Home. And how was it done? So on the previous year we mentioned that the case of Reuven and Shimon happened this past week, right before Pesach, where Reuven goes ahead, sees an object that's a table left outside. Hey, that's a great table for my kid's room. <coughs> a little table, a desk. And a few minutes later, he sees Shimon taking it and putting it into his car. Reuven said, no, no, I saw that about a half hour ago. I was planning on taking it. So he said, logically, just seeing they go to take it from the Baba Metzi, the first parak, <coughs> excuse me, and from Shochanar Reish Samech Ted, it seems that just seeing this in a, in a form of acquisition, uh, picking up, asking someone to pick up for you, and he says, I'm picking it up for you, or it's clear he's picking it up for you, that might be an acquisition. Just seeing it is not, and desiring it is not. Fine. So it belongs to the one who was taking and putting it into his car, not the one who saw it and dreamed about having it. Do we say, yes, technically it does belong to Shimon, not to Ruve, but is it the right thing to do for Shimon to give it to Ruve? So there's plenty of times that something technically might be yours, but we still say, Tovi Yashar, it's good and it's proper to give it to the other person. We see this very prominently <coughs> in, <coughs> excuse me, Reish Nun Ted Hechot HaShabbat Plenty of times, plenty of times it says that there are cases where I don't have to give this back to the person, but Tovi Yashar, it's proper to. An example, an object that when is, is lost in a river. And we assume it's lost in the river, a raging river, everyone gives up hope, they're never going to find it. So when you go ahead and you find it down the river, you can keep it. Ah, there's a sign on it. Yes, it's an assumed, a presumed, Yeush, despair, the person just gave up hope. And we don't ask each person to find out did he give up hope or not. It's a, an assumption, halachic assumption. You go ahead, and lo and behold, who comes down the river? The person. And he says, oh, did you see this and this? Oh, there you have it. It's exactly this, and this color, that color, and has this sign on it. Like, wow, the only way he could know this it's his. And there's another case where the object is lost in a town, not a Jewish town. Also, there's a presumed yeish. And it's, and it's you, it belongs to you. Even though the person's screaming, no, 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 I want it, I want it. Doesn't matter, halachically. In those cases, in Reish Nuntet, Hoshem Mishpat, what does the Shulchan say? You don't have to give it back. Tovi Yashav, you should. Technically, we know it's his. But technically, we also know you're off. It's, it's yours, technically. But we do know that he owned it. He's giving clear signs that no one else could have known. And that normally would work with a typical case of finding a lost object. But because of various reasons that happened, so technically you're, quote, off the hook. You don't have to give it back. But Tovi Yashar, it's true that technically you're off the hook, but you know it's his. And it would be a nice thing to give it back. So do we say over here by Reuben and Shimon in front of the house in Erev Pesach, where Shimon's putting the, the desk in his car, and Reuben says, come on, I saw it first. So do we say Shimon that could say, listen, it's mine technically, and I don't have to give it back to you for there's no reason to give it back to say, hey, come on. Yes, Shimon, yes, technically it's yours, but really she give it to him. So I don't think it's the same thing at all. In the first case, by the Yam, it falls into the river. In that case, it was his. There's no shail it was his. The only thing is, because of this challenging circumstance, he technically lost ownership of it. Even if he didn't feel it, even if he didn't give up hope. Technically, that's a lot. But we know it was his, <laughs> so it's Tovi Yashar, it's good and proper to give it back. As opposed to here, it was, just, it was never his, he just dreamed about it being his. So I don't think we'd even apply the language of Tov Yashar, which is why in Reish Samech Ten you don't see that language. You only see that language in Reish Nun Ted about the other cases, not about the acquiring cases that we discussed now, with Arab Pesach sitting at the table. Because one, when it was ready, his, and now technically he lost it, nice to give it back. It was never his, he just sort of wanted it. It wasn't his, it, oh, you're really off on a technical, uh, legal halacha here. Therefore, I wouldn't say Tovi Yashar, this is the same case. You want to go ahead and make the other person happy and give him a gift, because you see that he's so sad. We've been really was hoping. He was dreaming he's going to fit into my children's room and I can't afford a desk. And I, wow, he's so excited to see this desk. And I just it was going to talk to my wife and see if she wanted it also. And, oh, so you want to do a chesed to another Jew and make him happy and give him a gift. So anytime we give gifts, we always have to make cheshbon. We're giving up something for ourselves to someone else over here. 
year, you might want to give a gift very nice. But I don't think this is the case of Tovi Yash and Reish Natan. This is a separate Haftar Yachar Kabocha case. You have to judge and see. Well, I need it for my room. It's good for my kids' room. I need to start spending more on this total stranger, but it's, it's, it's another Jew. I can make him happy. Okay, I have to make all the Hashpanot. But I don't think it's the same case as Reish Natan. Two separate cases. Reish Natan is Tovi Yashar. It was his, and therefore it would be a nice thing to make sure he gets it back. Reish Natan was never his. And therefore we don't see Tovi Yashar. Shalom.